me this platform to reason with the whole uh, massive and give them the vibration of who I am. Well, then I is a Rastafarian individual yeah. who is enthusiastic about music, you know, started singing that very young. Maybe about the age of five, first time got inspired when I heard my aunt singing a gospel song in church. That was when I was five years old, you know, a three-part harmony touched me to my soul. And then, you know, I think that was there and then when I decided that I really want to try at least to do something similar to that, you know. Um, went through the whole choirs and groups and stuff. My first group was in high school. Yeah. Named Excess. Yeah, you know. Never really learned the harmony yet until my second group, which was Q. Okay. We entered Digital Rising Star in 2005 and we came fifth. And, you know, that's our entrance to the music industry. And we continued from there and then the group declined to me alone in 2000 and about 13, 14. And that's on his poem. And we released some singles. So <laughs> that's a quick summary. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. Who, have, who has been your musical influences? Ah, well, you know, I started singing in a group at a uh, very tender age. Um, you know, groups always listen to a lot of other groups. So yeah. my influences started from like Boys the Men, you know, the NC, Backstreet Boys, okay. Acapella, Take Six, yeah, all of those groups, you know. We also had individual um, preferences where... I was drawn a lot to the reggae music where I really love the sound of Garnet Hill, you know, yeah. the Freeze. Love all of Bob Marley's song. You know, recently I'm a, I'm a big Chronics fan, Protege, I Wayne, you know, so that's me. Yeah, man. <laughs> so, how would you describe your music? Oh, uh, well, my music, uh, I would, uh, let me see. I like to tell stories, you know, so. <laughs> Okay. Most of my songs ha has a little storyline to it. Apart from that, you know, it's more roots. Yeah. You know, more cultural in a sense, uh, positive. You know, just music for for the mind and the soul. You know, and keep the body moving at the same time. Okay. So, obviously, you're very eclectic in the music and what you like. So, what drawn you particularly to reggae? Well. Um, I remember the first time when I hear Inner Circles, this, this was when I was really young too, when I heard the song, um, that was one of my favorite songs about anywhere I was in the world, that, that time I was about five or something, anywhere I was hearing that song, I would run and go and watch the TV or something, you know, so, yeah. apart from that, I had an uncle in St. Elizabeth. He played a lot of old records, you know, so okay. he always used to go and juggle in the sessions and stuff. And, you know, he was also my babysitter whenever my mom brings me the St. Elizabeth. So I always have to just roll with him, go wherever. Yeah. And, you know, there, that was where the vibration came from, a little old reggae music. Okay, definitely. So you've told us that you you sang in two groups. How, how did they come about? How did those groups come about? All right, all right. Remember when I told you that the first time I heard that beautiful song that I call harmony was when my three aunts were singing a three-part harmony yeah. on a gospel song, and that was amazing. Then, in Jamaica, uh, out here, I, I grew up in a church. You know, I grew up in the Seventh-day Adventist church, and in Jamaica, in the Seventh-day Adventist denomination, I don't know, but there are a lot of groups. Yeah. And they sound amazing. They have, comp not competition, but, you know, they have, like, concerts and stuff where everybody come and showcase their talent. And, you know, as a singer, you're going to associate yourself with other little singers. We come and put ourselves together, started our own little church group and, you know, practicing harmonies and stuff. And then you continue doing it in school where you find other singers in school. So at a young age, I was always associated with young singers singing harmonies and stuff. And... You know, it just evolved. Okay. Wow. So, when when you're writing your lyrics and your your um your songs, do you freestyle it or do you write them down? Well, I do both. You know, sometimes a little freestyle can become one of the biggest songs. 
in your catalog yeah. and then sometime another song where you sit down and meditate out and take your time and write it out um it can also do the same so you know both ways can bring forth a good song okay and why why are you thinking about the music business in general are you thinking it's doing good or or what what, what are your thoughts about it um yeah, the music is doing good. As long as you have positive artists out there doing positive music and reaching the people's soul, then I will have to say it's doing good. You know what I mean? Sometimes it's not the easiest thing for an artist to reach out there a certain way, but at the end of the day, you, you can't complain. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you just have to keep doing what you're doing. And yeah, so I have nothing bad to say about the industry. It's, it's doing well to me. As I'm telling you, I'm a big Chronix fan. Chronix is doing amazing out here. So it's protege them. You know, and you always have the reggae artists all over in the world. So I, yeah. I, I don't have nothing bad to say about it. Definitely. So I, I understand that you've performed at some really big festivals like Sunfest, Rebel Salute, and so many more. How, 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 does, how does it feel to go on stage and perform? Uh, yeah, man, I, that performing on these big stages in Jamaica is a great thing. Yeah. Um, I did the Sunfest. I did Sunfest, I think, about twice or three times. All of them, Rebel Salute, I did twice. I did Sting, Stepping High, Ganja Festival. Yeah. You know, a couple of, always a great feeling because these shows, you know, you have a, your main Jamaican crowd coming out to support and be entertained. So... That's a chance where you can get the, the opportunity to reach out to your core crowd, which is your your, your crowd out here in Jamaica. I always agree with you. Just yeah. Any nerves? <laughs> I, I think I'm the most nervous person before I touch any stage. But okay. whenever you go on it, you know you have to deliver. Now you just have to get it out the way. But nerves play a, a very important role. You know, it always keep you on your toes. You always know. Nerves come when you want to get things done perfect, you know? Okay. Definitely. So I, I understand that you've also worked with Sons of Spoon music label? Uh, yeah, I have been working with Sons of Spoon since 2014. You know, I released most of my singles uh, through Sons of Spoon label with, with like Time No Wait, Uncle Come, Tech Life, you know, majority of everything that you've been hearing so far. Yeah. You know? Um, Right now, I'm currently working on an album in the midnight as a debut album. Okay. But I always want to talk about and all of the interview to tell everybody, look out for it, you know, as well as check out all the other singles, like the, the previous one that we released, which is Wenchi High, you know, doing well all over the world. And um, But now, the main thing is the album really enjoying this project when it comes out to the writing, the, the direction and all of those stuff. So everybody look out for the debut album soon. Okay. So... Just to let you know, the other day I was sent a little video of yourself. You were like chatting on the mic and everybody loved it on my Facebook page. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so so what what was that? People have asked me to ask you, what was that in aid of? Uh, well, I don't know which one specifically, uh, <laughs> but... Uh, um, if I knew which one you were talking about... Okay. I could definitely tell you. I, I would have to go on the Facebook and check it. Okay, no problem, no problem. Well, it's, been, it's just when you're just chatting away, you're in, um, you're just next to another guy and you're chatting, but it doesn't say what you what it was an aid of. Oh, oh was it case. was it like an interview? I was doing an interview. No, it wasn't an interview. It was just you spitting some lyrics, and a lot of people were liking that video. Oh, I think I know. I, it, 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 it was cut from an interview that I oh, did for, um, yeah, for this, for two um, interviewers out here, two journalists. Okay. Uh, they have this program named Nightly Fix. So they always tell, when I went to an interview, they say, yeah, then I good reggae artist. So I corrected him and said, come on, Nero. I'm not only a reggae artist. Me love dancers. So I'm a group in that culture of dancers. So, you know, don't judge a book by the cover. I'm a looks, yeah. I'm a color, you know, just... I appreciate me for what I bring to the table. So we we'll continue the interview, and again he said, "Yeah, man. So how do you feel, you know, bringing all this reggae?" And so I said, "Nero, me tell you, I already said me love dance all too. So me and the only one reggae artist and except said, you want to prove yourself.' Me said, "All right, give me the rhythm." 
Yeah. And if give me the rhythm for test me out for see if me get more well a vibration for the dance hall rhythm. I guess it surprised them, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's good. At least you showed them as well, innit? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So, talking of that, could you give the listeners a little, a little here now? All right, sure. I'm not a problem with that. Okay, cool. Yeah, this is the one and only original that I'm representing for DJ Cat. I'm excited. She tell me. I said she want me when she high, so she called me plenty time, we put it on again tonight. I, she tell me that she know what we see got it, now big belly ball and him lick a brick. that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, what, what events have you got coming up? Alright, um, so before I go to the events we have coming up, we did so, some really good ones uh, the past week. We went okay. to Canada. We did a show in Montreal. That was that was amazing. Um, we also did the same awards in at the Rose Theatre in Brampton, Ontario. So Ontario. So okay. we are open for Marcia Griffiths, and that again was a phenomenological experience. It was amazing. You know, words can't explain, and yeah. you know, great feeling for the shows coming up. Now we're going to Europe. Uh, uh, in in October coming, and that is another experience I'm definitely looking forward to. Okay, definitely. So where can people get your music from? Well, you know, uh, some of the songs are available on all the, the platforms where you can go and purchase uh, music, like iTunes and all the others, you know, so yeah. you can go and check it out. Uh, apart from that, you don't know, you have other songs just for listening purpose on YouTube. You can just go in and type in Danai, D-A-N-N dash I, and you're going to find a whole heap of tune, man. You know, yeah. Okay, so is, is there a song where you will always listen to no matter what no matter what stage you are at in your life oh yeah man um <laughs> my love fun tune with him hello darkness my old friend by simon and garfunkel okay. that's how i want to yeah <laughs> i don't know it just it just put me in a mood you know whenever i want to feel that good vibration i just pop it in and it just give me that nice feeling there you know okay that's just good to hear so We'll come back to the last few few minutes of, of the interview. Um, basically, I just want to know from you yourself coming from Jamaica, how does reggae differ or not differ from around the world? Well, all right. Um, let's see now. Reggae music. Yeah. It's going to differ naturally, man, because you don't know, you know, the initial stage. Okay. Reggae music was strigger music, you know, yeah. and until uh, our toots are said, strigger just sound too rough star, it just sound like, it just sound unacceptable and change it to reggae. So, you know, reggae was at the heartbeat music, at the, at the, at the, at the, at the, um, the strugglers, you know, it's like struggle music, it's the poor man's lament in a, in a, in a, a art form, in a musical art form, and it, it come across rough sometimes, and me hear an interview one time where a warrior said, that has a beauty about reggae because, you know, the initial stages, you know, the best studio I recorded, you know, the best equipment, yeah. so it's like a come off a little edgy, and that just make it different from everything else, you know, yeah. the, the way the bass run, the way the organ bubble, you know, I make you go on and on to explain it, we just yeah. show you. Say a reality attack. It really differ from everything else. It have, may I say, it have spirit in it and soul in it. You know what I mean? Definitely. So, what would you say to young people out there that want to get involved in music? May I say go and do it? You know. All right. The last interview me do this pop up in my head and I want to share it again with everybody. We are. May I show them say. You see the doctor them way all your parents and the lawyers and this your parents and everybody are forced you to go and study. You have a talent as a big bad musician. You play the best piano or you have the best vocals in the world. Yeah. You know me I say? And everybody I say, no man, go and go study the doctor or the thing. Let me tell you this. You see the doctor? Yeah. You can study and go turn the doctor if you want, you know. But you see the doctor, he not have no story, I come story and can't have that pretty voice the way you have in it. That is a talent. Yeah. You see what I mean, I show you? Definitely. Yes, some more of the warrior and the empress, them just know, say, them can appreciate the talent where them have and work with it and use it and inspire people with it, yeah, man. Definitely. 
I want to say thank you for taking the time out to talk to us on ouratradio.com, for real. Yeah, man, thank you so much. The pleasure is all mine, you know. Yeah. I really appreciate this way you gave me the platform to express myself and thing. I want everybody just check out my Instagram pages, D-A-N-N underscore I music. Uh, you don't know if you want for bookings, the link dance some booking agency. You know, if they ever yeah. everywhere, email anything you want. It's just dance some booking agency. Also the Facebook page, you know, all of them things there's at Damara Danai. Just check it out, man. One love to all of the people, man. Definitely. Give thanks again. Thank you very much. Speak very soon, yeah. Yeah, man. Looking forward to it. Okay. Bye bye. Yeah.